This is the brand new Pershing GTX 116 making its world premiere here at the Cannes boat show some numbers for you it's 115 foot long it weighs around 130 tons it's got 6,000 horsepower split across triple engines and it will top out at 35 knots it is an extraordinary machine and I think it's got the coolest helm chair I've ever seen before we get into it though make sure you subscribe to the channel hit subscribe hit the bell icon and you'll never miss another tour like this one let's get on board I'm Jack Haynes welcome to Yacht Buyer Here we go then, on we get. And it is such a dramatic entrance onto this boat. You board straight down the middle, got these railings either side to it, it's really easy. This is a transformer underneath my feet. The platform's fixed, but this whole section comes up and out and into the water. But this view is spectacular. You've got this mezzanine cockpit, the huge sat domes plonked on top, and then the staircase sort of moving round up to the sky deck. It is so unique, truly amazing bit of design. And then we come onto the you know, the sort of key part of the main deck of the GTX, which is this mezzanine cockpit with the sort of toy area beach club down here. Huge amount of open space down there. You can see the crane. That's to get toys and tenders out of this tender garage. This whole door lifts up like this and you've got room for a jet ski and a tender. But also having the crane here means you can lift all sorts in and out and store it on deck. But also this is open space to put bean bags and sun lounges and just, you know, make into that sort of sociable area right by the water. These two sections here go up and out on these amazingly engineered hinges here. So you can really open them up to sort of break the link between this area here and the platform. And then you have access split up both sides. It's exactly the same on either side. This is just storage here for lines and actually they've got the hose stowed in there as well. And then up into the cockpit, and this is the chill out area. If that's the sort of fun zone where all the water ties are, this is where you come to relax, enjoy the sun, have lunch. You've got fridges down here on both sides so you have really easy access to cold drinks. And this is a huge sunbathing space. Engine room access down here, and I would encourage you to stick around to the end to have a look down there. There's three 2,000 horsepower engines down there. It really is quite something. And this is a really, really deep cockpit. It goes a long way forward, so there's space here for this bar, where you've got a sink, yet more cooling space, and obviously well positioned between the saloon and the cockpit to serve this table here. Look at the sound system as well, serious speakers. It's got party boat written all over it, this thing. And talking of that, if you want to serve guests out here, you've got quite a simple hot plate sink down here, a bit of more storage underneath. And I imagine space for another grill, which they've not got fitted on this particular boat. But again, like that bar over there, You've got your bar, you've got your wet bar and your grill, all by the table. It does make serving guests very, very easy. Access up both sides to the sun deck, which we're gonna look at in a moment. These are technical lockers and big storage spaces. And there's a day head over there, very conveniently placed outside the boats. So if you come up from the bathing platform in wet clothes, you can go in there, use the loo and carry on having fun. You can close this off. You see there's a door here, so if you want to stop wind funneling down, you can close that off. Also gives you a bit more privacy if you have got a crude boat. And then we're onto the side deck. You can only get down the side deck on this deck on the port side. You'll notice these are fold down platforms and they align with this sliding door here. Push the button, door slides back, and then you have this great connection between the saloon, the side deck, and of course, the drop down balcony, which has got glass and teak laid into it. That's a really nice piece of design. Technical lockers and storage all the way down here. This is semi-covered. We'll hear it echoing a bit because you've got glass here for a bit of protection. And then it opens up again as you move forward. Boarding gates here. So if you're side two, you can get off at the bow. You don't have to go down to the back of the boat. And there's a side door into the helm here as well. Right forward then, we have a smaller but very important living space because this is where the hot tub is as you can tell, covered at the moment, so it can be a sun pad, but whip those off, fill her up, and then you've got this lovely tub in a prime position here on the bow. I really like the teak trim and the quality of this stainless to help you get in and out. It's absolutely lovely. Sun lounges either side, so other people can relax around the tub. Sound system up here, of course. It's a really, really cool area, and it's a working area too. Must remember that, so you've got big storage hatches underneath my feet and then the sort of mooring and anchor gear that you need on a 115 foot boat, twin winches, massive cleats, big old built-in fair leads, it's proper stuff. Just remember to empty the tub before you bury the throttles. 
Now let's head up to the sport bridge. Like smaller boats in the Pershing range, access up to the top deck is really neatly integrated up either side. And then you're onto this flybridge, sun deck, whatever you want to call it. Now there are boats at this size with much larger top decks, but you've got to remember the point of this design is to give you all that living space on the main deck where the bathing platform is and the cockpit. And there's still plenty of space up here. You can see you've got this enormous sunbathing area over here and there's storage under here for all of the covers up here. I've literally just watched them do it. All of the covers swallowed in there really easily. Some freestanding furniture here where you can just sit back and relax. You've got a coffee table in the middle and a little bit of protection from this stubby hard top overhead. And then amidships, you have the bar. And this is nicely designed because it's all integrated within the T-top, including the seats. I love the fact that you can just walk up, perch here, grab a drink. You haven't got freestanding stalls. They're built into the T-top structure here. Moving around, you have the bar area itself, You've got the sink here. I presume the option of a grill that this boat doesn't have. Seems like it would be made to have a barbecue up here and then the usual array of cooling stuff down here. And then we have the upper helm. And considering this has got 6,000 horsepower and we'll do 35 knots, I think sitting up here being in command of this thing while it's doing that would be absolutely magnificent. Hopefully we'll get to experience that one day. This is a great helm station. You've got triple jet drives split across two throttles for slow speed control you'll use joystick we'll talk a bit more about that later you've got your bow thruster here and then quite a simple dash arrangement really only all you need to sort of steer the boat from up here where are the mfds i hear you say well they're neatly concealed underneath here push this button up they come and you've got three screens with all of your information on them but the main event when it comes to driving this boat is downstairs so let's head down there It wouldn't be a Pershing without some push button fun. So this door slides open nice and quickly actually at the push of a button and creates a really large entranceway into the saloon, completely flush floor, so it's very easy to move around here. And you have the same thing on this side as well. And on deck, I talked about the connection between these areas. So you can see if you open this up and then of course drop the balcony down, which we can't do here inside the confines of the boat show, but you have this really nice flow out of the interior onto the side deck and then onto your balcony where you can set up chairs and somewhere to have a coffee. I think it's, it's awesome. And then this is your internal living space. All of the furniture is done by Poltrona Frau. It looks really, really nice, very classy, as you can imagine, absolutely dripping with style. And this is a, a really nice place to, to relax in an evening with the comfy armchairs and the nice L-shaped sofa over there. Moving forward to the dining area, it is sort of hilarious to me that something that this glamorous and this powerful has to think of the sort of day-to-day -day practicalities of living on board. The fact that something of this glamour and speed has dedicated fiddle space for a teapot is, is just very, very funny. But it's all there, all neatly stashed away, and it's the same with the glassware forward as well. Everywhere has its place. I suppose if you're charging along at 35 knots, you've got to know that your china and your glass isn't going to be rattling around all over the place. Wine fridge here, and then as I mentioned, you've got storage here that lights up as you open it to reveal all your glassware and even down to dedicated individual cutlery fiddles very very proper stuff and then moving right forward we come to what i think is my favorite bit of the inside which is the bridge We're not even going anywhere, but I can't help but have a big grin on my face at the prospect of getting into this seat. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> I thought the Tide had the coolest helm station I've ever seen. You can watch that video, I'll put a link above my head. But that's quite quickly been superseded by this because this is, this is rocket ship. It absolutely is rocket ship in every sense. It's incredible. You've got the twin throttles for the jets underneath your hands. Joystick here for slow speed maneuvering. You've got three jets, obviously using the joystick is the best way to juggle those around. And then <laughs> this position is absolutely amazing. The chair is so comfortable. Carbon fiber detailing, you've got all the buttons right under your fingers. Also the screens under here so you can check everything, everything to do with the boat really, all the systems underneath your hand. And then <laughs> that view of the, the Pershing badge and the clock and these widescreen screens, uh, it's just incredible and you're so far forward here. This is part of this boat's charm. You've got this really distinctive sort of wheelhouse design, single piece windscreen. You're a long way forward sitting in this chair. I mean, there is a wheel down there. I don't imagine you're gonna use it all that much, but 
yeah, this is just one of the most extraordinary driving positions I've ever sat in. Here on the lower deck, there's a five cabin arrangement. Forward, you have identical double cabins. They're both en suite and a really good size. Loads and loads of headroom throughout this area, especially in there, nice amount of space. And then as we move aft, halfway down the companionway to the lower deck, they've actually got another day head. So you have that one up in the cockpit that we've already seen, but you have one inside as well. It's not right in the lower deck, so it's a bit close to the main deck. It's quite a smart idea. You have some storage space here in this lobby area and then we get to the twin cabins so i'll just duck into this one here on the starboard side and as you can see it's another spacious cabin towering towering headroom throughout this interior and every cabin twin and double has got its own bathroom so there's loads of privacy down here and what you can do is replace one of these cabins with a lower dinette or saloon if you want to if you want to have a sort of living space for guests on the lower deck you can lose one of the guest cabins and do that if you prefer but moving right in midships, we're into this pretty lovely full beam owner's cabin. Can't help but notice the size of the TV in this cabin. It's one of the biggest TVs I think I've ever seen in an owner's cabin. Huge amount of floor space here. It's very easy to move around. You know, it feels much more like, like bedroom than cabin in here. It, it really is lovely. Big bed, set low and wonderful detailing. I love the lighting, the separate bed heads look really nice. There's a really nice mix of colours in here. Huge quantities of storage too. You haven't got a walk-in wardrobe, but there's very good reason for that. We'll see that in a second. But yeah, look at all that storage there, storage dotted around here. And again, it's the headroom that really gives you this feeling of luxury. But I mentioned the bathroom. Let's head in there because you don't just have twin sinks. You have totally separate bathrooms pretty much, with an enormous shower in the middle. They're absolutely amazing. You've got this setup mirrored on both sides, separate toilet, separate sink, and then in the middle, one of the biggest showers I've seen on a boat of this size with a huge rain shower head, separate shower nozzles as well. It's a really lovely space. Talking of lovely spaces, let's head to the engine room. When you first come down here, you come into this sort of technical area where you have all of the boats switching, easily accessed, power management right down here by the engine room and close to the deck so the crew can come down and check on it really easily. Look at all this cabling as well. It's super, super neat and tidy. The installation is really, really good on this thing. Then if we head off one more time to this watertight door, we're into the proper part of the engine room. There we go. And I'll just close that so it's a little bit quieter. And here we are in the belly of the beast. And as you can see, it's a little bit of a clamber to get through, but considering you've got three 2000 horsepower motors in this thing, actually getting around them really isn't too bad. There's not a huge amount of clearance over the outboard ones, but the middle one isn't too bad. And then of course you have all the power from LRR for the jets. You've got all the hydraulics for the thrusters, stabilizers. It's all very neatly arranged. It is quite packed in, but it should be relatively easy to look after because it's an incredibly tidy insulation. Now I mentioned the top speed, 35 knots, but this thing will cruise at 30 knots and with over 13,000 litres of fuel on board, you get 400 nautical miles out of it at that speed, which is pretty extraordinary. Thanks very much for watching that tour. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give the video a like. If you want to watch more Persian content, we've got more of that for you up here. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you can click up here. Thanks for watching.